What's up ninjas? Today we're at the mini range once again and we have two 1911s. One is the TSAS double stack 1911 and this is the Springfield Armory M1911A1 chambered in 45. So we have the 9 and then the 45. Going to be doing a little bit of a comparison. I also brought the SIG. We're just going to confirm that the iron sights are good. Even though I went to the tunnel range earlier and already did that, we're just going to be doing a little bit of shooting today, just some pistol action. So stay tuned, enjoy, make sure you guys watch the video all the way to the end because I have a very special surprise. So don't miss it and let's get right into it. So I've been having some issues. I noticed with these mics, the audio is slightly delayed. So I'm going to have to like start every video by clapping just to make sure that we're nice and synced up here. So we got the TSOS double stack 1911. I shot about four or five mags out of this earlier and it performed pretty well. I got the red dot zeroed. So I'm just gonna be taking some shots at the wood block down there. And we also have some steel targets. So let's get right into it. Now I zeroed this for seven yards and the elevation adjustment is all the way cranked and it couldn't go up anymore. And it was still shooting low at seven yards. So I'm hoping at about 15, maybe 25 yards, it'll be perfectly zeroed, but we'll try it out. I think I'm about 15 yards or so away and I'll back up a little bit. Where'd my dot go? I gotta turn the brightness up. I like the solar one better because it auto adjusts with the brightness. Maybe I'm shooting too high. Or too low still. I think I'm shooting too low. Let's try this steel here. Yeah, it's shooting low. So I have to use the bottom of the circle to actually get it to hit. Go reload real quick. Actually, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit and see if I can hit it better from back here. So yeah, I can't adjust up anymore, so it's shooting low. So let's, uh, we'll get a different angle. It's all about the angle of the dangle. So now I'm about 20-ish yards away. See if we're any more accurate. So what I'm having to do, and I don't know if you guys can see the dot here, but there's a circle and a dot. I just lost it. Anyways, there's a circle and a dot and I have to use the very bottom of the circle. And that's what I have to aim with. So let's try again, a little bit further out. I think it's still shooting low. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to look into a different solution for this because I can't adjust up anymore. Oh shit, I only had five rounds left. It shoots pretty smooth. It just sucks that I'm used to aiming with the uh, red dot and I can't really. So we got 10 rounds, 5.08 seconds. Probably could have gone a lot faster, but I didn't want to just mag dump it without trying to aim at least. All right, ninjas, we got the big boy, the Lord's caliber, 45 ACP. Let me switch up the angle here. See if this is any better. 
45 ACP, Springfield Armory, 1911A1. I'm going to try to hit the steel. This one was shooting low also, so we'll just have to see. Or this one was shooting high. There we go. This one's got a little bit more kick than that nine. I'll go for the paper. That one was way high. So I need to aim low on this one. A couple more shots with the 45. So I need to aim low. Yeah. This one's definitely got a little bit more kick. I'm going to take a few more shots with this and I want to shoot the SIG a little bit and then that'll be it because I'm running low on ammo. So I'm going to just try to take my time and aim for the paper and see exactly where this thing's hitting. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using the very bottom of the reticle and it's hitting the center of the target. And I'm out. So, definitely need to get this fixed, this issue. Alright, ninjas. Fatal mistake. Not really fatal, but I thought I had a mag loaded up for the SIG, and I didn't, so had to load it up. All right, I'm seven-ish yards. No, I'm closer to 10-ish yards, but we got the SIG. I re-zeroed the iron sights, and they, uh, they performed pretty well at the tunnel range earlier. So I'm just going to do a couple shots on paper and then the steel, and then I'll go back and we'll try out the 1911 from back there. So the SIG is good. I wasn't even going to bring it today, but I figured might as well just uh, get a couple shots off on it. We're comfortable now. Very comfortable with the iron sights. Take you guys on a little journey. We're going way, 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 way back here. So this range day was kind of impromptu. I... Uh, didn't really bring a whole bunch of guns. I just brought the couple pistols. So, not a super in-depth range day like we normally do. And I was trying to get Juggernaut out here, but uh, he stayed <laughs> he stayed up till like 9 a.m. watching uh, the new Tire series on Netflix. So he didn't uh, he didn't get to come today. We're, we have like four or five rounds left. I need to make some shorts with the rest of these and then it'll be the end of the video. So let's come out. I'm taking you way out here. I'm talking... I'm talking like 50 yards probably. So if you can see the target, it's not, not even close to 50. We'll come back here by this wood pile. So I'm, I'm way out here in the depths. Let's see if I can, I need to adjust this camera a little bit. We have the t -Sauce double stack. All right, this is probably close to 40, 50 maybe. I'm gonna try to use the center dot to hit the steel since up close I was having to use the bottom of the circle. Let's see if I can even hit steel from here. We're close. Yeah, so whatever this distance is, try to get that small one. All 
I'm hitting all around it. I just can't hold myself steady enough. I drank a Red Bull and now I'm tweaking. But yeah, it's, it's pretty close, I would say. Yeah. I will say I'm not totally impressed by this. I was using the iron sights at first and it was shooting like four or five inches low at seven yards. The, the side to side was accurate, but the, the elevation was just way low. So. so the iron sights aren't where they should be. It's uh, pretty difficult. I mean, it's not super difficult to aim with the bottom ring, but it is kind of not ideal, I guess. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, just kind of know that you may need to figure out where to hold it to be able to be accurate with it at close ranges. So I guess that's gonna be it guys. It wasn't a super eventful video. We did, I'll go show you the target real quick. We did, uh, we did get a few shots in, making sure the pistol was at least functioning and reliable. As you can see, they're on paper. However, um, just using the bottom of that circle is just kind of weird. Hope you guys enjoyed this. We got it broken in at least a little bit more. We'll probably put a couple hundred rounds through it by now. So uh, if you have any advice, if you have one of these and maybe if you run a red dot on it, like what do you do? Because I can't get this thing to adjust up anymore and it's just kind of a pain in the ass using that bottom circle. All right, ninjas. First of all, I just want to say YouTube, this is a safe and controlled environment. This is an empty handgun. There's no ammo around. There's no children around. There's no other people around. So don't demonetize my video. But look, this is what I got going on. So I explained this in the video a little bit, but I was waiting to finish this video until I actually got this thing ordered. This is a little shim. It's made by... See if we can get it to focus. ADE Advanced Optics. So this is for the RMSC cut. And if you can tell, it's thicker on one end than the other. So what this does is sits right here on top of your optics plate and it angles your red dot slightly downwards at one degree because when the barrel's in full lockup, it actually tilts down one degree or it's like 0.9 degrees or something like that. So it looks like I am gonna have to trim this just a little bit and then I'll do that real quick with some scissors and I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, I got the shim all cut out. This isn't ideal, this is just like a temporary fix and I'm gonna eventually get the slide milled one degree tapered that way. So this is just a little temporary fix to see if this is actually the problem, which from what I read online, a lot of 1911s have this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the hollow sun put back on and we'll go ahead and torque the screws down and then take it to the range probably sometime this weekend. All right, I just got the optic torque down and you can't really tell on camera. You can barely tell IRL, but it is tilted down just slightly and hopefully that'll give us just enough extra elevation adjustment and we can actually get this thing properly zeroed. Also, we're clear, YouTube. Don't worry about it. All right, guys, uh, that's going to be it for this one. Wasn't too impressed by the T-SAS double stack just because of the optic situation. Also, the iron sights were shooting way low. Just keep that in mind if you're getting one of these. There's another guy that commented on one of my videos, and he said he has the EPS carry, and he had no problem zeroing it. So I don't know if it's just specifically the 507K doesn't have enough elevation adjustment. But we will try this out, and if this is good, I'm going to go ahead and get the slide milled, and we'll go ahead and have a proper optic mount on here. So that's going to be it. If you guys like the video, click like, subscribe, comment, do everything, and watch the ads all the way until the end, because your boy needs a little bit extra money to fund all these cool builds. Also, we have patches for sale. I forgot about the patches. There are patches for sale, the 2A Ninja patches. Check them out on the community post, 2aninja.com. 
go ahead and pick up a patch use code ninja to save two dollars and support the channel so we can keep doing cool builds and keep uh, keep on rocking so so that's gonna be it guys make sure you like comment subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one